Hello everyone, what's up Wednesday? Super excited to see each and every one of you and share another keto meal with you guys. Go over some Bible readings and possibly even tell you a story, talk about keto. Let's just have some fun. If you're new to this channel, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that notification bell, then you'll be notified whenever I upload new videos. Share around this channel to help it to grow. Shoot me any and all comments down below and definitely shoot this girl some love, some thumbs up. Let's get eating. everyone great to see you it's wednesday you guys that means we're in the middle of the week and we're sliding into the weekend again hope you guys got some great plans weather's been a you know just phenomenal here in minnesota and i hope it's really great where you guys are so we're trying to enjoy um you know the weather been grad selling and doing a few things but i just been so busy too with my new channel the business um doing uh you know, buying, painting, and selling those babies. In fact, all this stuff is around me because I am working on another baby that I'm gonna be selling, but I wanted to share this video with you guys. So yeah, uh, no new recipe again, because I've just got so much going on and I'll kind of talk about it in here with you guys. But um, yeah, we're just gonna do some ground beef and um, cauliflower, the riced cauliflower. And I just got butter and soy sauce, salt and pepper. I love it that way. I used to have rice and hamburger. So that's what it reminds me of when I used to do the butter and the soy sauce. So that's kind of my, you know, my replacement for keto is the cauliflowered rice and, um, or riced cauliflower and um, the hamburger with it. Then I got a couple baby cucumbers here. They're not so baby, but some baby cucumbers here with some dill dip, love dill dip. We've got a dessert here. It is um, cream cheese a uh, vanilla yogurt, one of the two good yogurts. Then we've got the white chocolate chips, the lily, and a like two or three strawberries cut up. They're just the smaller ones, the frozen ones. And then I've got some of that swerve, which is the powdered sugar in there. And when it, it softens a little bit more, I'll mix everything together. And that's gonna be um, one of the desserts. I think another one I'm gonna share, um, well, first I wanna count what I have here for carbs. Uh, then I've got an Earl Grey decaffeinated tea with sugar-free creamer. And today we're going to do a soda. We got Orange Crush Zero Sugar. And I do believe that this one is um, for sugar. I always want to make sure it's not the circle bowls because that's the one that I do not like to do. Um, why isn't it saying what the sugar is in here? Oh, aspartame. That one I do well with. That one I don't get kicked. So we're going to have an orange soda here. Yeah, and after I count the calorie or the uh, carbs here, because I'm doing one meal again, and I'll tell you why. Um, I do one meal very frequently, but it's been very tough for me to stick with one meal, going through perimetopause and all that, but we've got some other stuff to discuss, all right? Um, so I've got um, like half the ground beef here so it was like a pound of ground beef so like a half a pound of ground beef here and like half the pack of the uh not quite because my husband had some too and about a fourth a bag of the cauliflower rice mixed through it um so that would be um for the whole thing i think it's like four so i think it's like it's like six so two um and then for this two three four five six seven eight um, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, about 14, counting this um, with this sugar. I, I've got about 15 carbs here. I know I'm under. I do know how to count this pretty quick, but I'm going to say, well, let's just guesstimate up. So I probably will have one of the ice cream bars too. I've got a Halo ice cream bar. I'd like to share with you guys. I mean, just show you that you can have it. So I'll probably share that on here. I'll have to have my husband give it to me because I don't want it to melt. But anyways, I, you know, oh, we almost forgot God. We can't forget God. God needs to be number one. Powerful prayers for every need. Today, what we are on is idols. 
Let's go ahead and read this one. This ought to be great. Dear children, keep yourself from idols. 1 John 5, 21. Boy, we need to teach our kids that, and we need to understand that too. Don't idolize anybody but God. Make God the one person you idolize. You know, if you want to idolize anybody, idolize God. Teach your children as you grow up, and they, you know, just like we were taught, you know, growing up, so like that, teach your children not to idolize anybody or anything over God. Make God the your idol. Kind of like Elvis Presley and Michael Jackson and all these famous people. People just love them. Justin Bieber, you know, they just, they just, I know I went backwards because I'm older or whatever, but just, you know, they idolize these people on earth. And, and even, even Elvis would say this and Trump even said, I am not above God. You know, God is, we give all the glory. He's the king. He's the king. Definitely the king. Dearest Lord, your word says that the nation's idols are made of silver and gold, molded by the hands of men. They have uh, months, uh, yeah, mouths, uh, but cannot speak, eyes, but cannot see. They have ears, but cannot hear. Why would anyone put their um, trust in an object that cannot see or hear? Thank you for seeing me, hearing me, and loving me. Amen. Psalms 135.15. That's true. You know, when we have these objects and things that we love, you know, it can't talk back to you. It can't love you back. Um, you know, God can. God's going to give you more love than you could ever imagine if you give yourself to God. Father God, you own my heart. Boy, he sure does. The world is full of idols, but for me, there is no God but you. What worry, What worries me in these uh, and those idols that are more difficult to identify, identify those that might distract me from your will or cause me to forget my first love. I pray, Lord, that you would help me as I strive to keep myself from idols. Amen. First John five twenty one. Sorry, I got a little emotional here. Um, just I've just really felt the presence of God in my life like so much more. When you read, you do, you feel so good. And I'm going to go over and tell you guys some things um, why I just got a little bit of emotional. But I just know that God is with me every step of the way. He is. So, yeah, I just, I guess when I was reading this, it kind of just touched me a lot that I just want God to know he is number one, number one in my life. He totally is. And I know how much he loves me. I do. I know him on how much he loves me. Lord, I have heard that there are many gods. Nevertheless, I believe that there is no God but you. I believe that it is from you that all things come and for you that we live. I pledge you my um, devotion, my loyalty, my whole heart. Never let me drift from you. Amen. 1 Corinthians 8, 6. I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry, God. Sorry, guys. Um, just... I don't know why these are touching me. I guess just things I'm feeling. Amazing Lord, you will always be first with me. Amen. Boy, you always will. God, I hope I always make you first. I do. I really hope that I always make God first, that he is my number one idol. I do get up every morning and I talk to God first thing when I wake up in the morning. And I try to make him the first, last thing when I go to bed at night. Um, very, very good about that. Every once in a while I might fall asleep, but I'll wake up and I'll talk to him. Start your day, go through your day, and end your day with Life's Manual, the Holy Bible. Read it, study it, and get a great personal relationship with Jesus. Because you will go through things in your life, trials and tribulation, that only God can get you through. And it's so much easier with God. It is. It's so much easier with God. So, sorry I'm so emotional, you guys. I uh, When I go over this stuff, you guys will understand. So, just... But asking for some prayers, and I'm going to go over and just tell you guys why. I feel God saying, you know, you can tell people, um, let them pray for you. Let them know what's going on. When two or more are gathered in the midst of it, God is there, you know. So when more people are praying, then, you know, he definitely is there. So let's pray for our food. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the food provided in front of me. I thank you for always giving me the needs that we need, a home uh, you know, the roof, food, clothes, and a bed. And I so appreciate all that you do. And I just ask that you bless this food to my body now. Let it give me all the nutrient my body needs and let me stay strong, God, this week. I need you to help me to stay strong, to stay one meal a day, God. I really need the strength and I know I can do it through you. And um, I just thank you for that, you know, God. And I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Leave right now. Get thee behind me. 
Thank you, Heavenly Father, for loving me, taking care of me, and giving me the peace I need. I pray all this in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. All right, now we can go ahead and eat. So, yeah, this was one of my favorite things was rice and hamburger. So it's a great alternative, and I actually like this better. because it's cauliflower and it has more flavor. Mmm. That is really, really good. Let's have a cucumber with some dill dip. I try to compose ourselves before I start talking. It's not going to work. I love dill dip. So I am um, pre-recording these videos. I will try to have one um, done this week for next week as well. I'm very busy with my business on the other channel and things I'm doing, but I'm going to have to take a little bit of time off. So I'm trying to have, uh, prepare myself to have a lot of videos. I don't have a nail video this week, you guys. Obviously, you know I didn't get one up. No fashion this week. There won't be one next week either. And I will go over and tell you why. I'm sure everyone will understand. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I'm trying to get caught up here. And I know all you guys would say, Angel, relax. Sit back and relax. You know, don't put so much on you. But I just want to keep these videos going because it's keeping my mind at peace. So... Well, I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys what's going on because you know what? Sometimes things in life, things happen. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person. The nicest people in the world. Okay, I'm going to rephrase that. The closest people in the world to God still go through trials and tribulation. Because we all are sinners. Even if you, you know, we're a big time sinner before getting your salvation. When you try hard now, we're still sinners, every one of us. And because we're offered a kingdom, we have to pay for our sins here on earth. But I am grateful for what happened. So in January and February, I was spotting a lot. Probably not a subject that men want to hear. <laughs> I wasn't getting it regular. I've already talked to God about this. So when I say it, God knows why I'm saying it. I thought maybe I was pregnant. Because my faith is that big. And I did. I thought I was pregnant because um, I pray in faith. Mark eleven twenty four says, pray within faith, believe, and it's yours. But not everything is handed to us. You know, God says yes, no, or not, no. But that's the first thing I thought. I thought my prayer was finally answered. I've been praying for so long. And it doesn't mean that God doesn't answer prayer. It doesn't mean that. He saves you from bad things. Sometimes we pray for the wrong thing and God saves you from it. Because I always said, let your will be done. Well, not only was I not pregnant, I went to the OBGYN. I had, had, hadn't had a pap done in a while. I don't know why, because of COVID, I put it off. And I really need regular checks because I have that HPV. I had the cervical one. a leap procedure done about 23 years ago. I had pre-cancer cells and had that removed and it's always been good since. But anyways, I thought, well, this, you know, I got to get to the OB-GYN. I haven't been there for a long time. I got to find out what's going on. Maybe I'm pregnant. And I need to get a pap and everything. 
So I went to the doctors. We did run a pregnancy test. We did it through blood, just to make sure. And she also did my annual pap smear. So it's been a while. And I waited those days for that phone call to hear that I was pregnant. I'm not gonna lie. But I'll explain it all after how I feel. Well, I got the call that I wasn't pregnant. That's okay. You know, I thought, well, it just wasn't yet. That's okay. But I did get told that my pap was abnormal. And that they had to do me to set up for a, I always say this wrong, a, a cola or a coloscopy, a coloscopy. I think I'm saying it right. I'll put it up on the screen there. It's the front, not the back. Now, let me tell you, that was painful, you guys. They had to do some biopsies. During this time, I also had my heart looked at. I had an MRI done during that time while I was waiting for the results. It was way overdue for my heart to be looked at. And they wanted to do it through an MRI. I had blood work done, everything. Everything was coming back really good. My heart went from 40% to 46. It's almost at 50 now. All my blood work was amazing. Even my cholesterol levels were coming down. I really think when people fast, your LDL will rise. Because now that I'm eating more than one meal, <clears throat> it's coming down dramatically. But this week, I'm going to stick with one meal. I'll tell you why. But anyways, everything was coming back good. And then I got the results of the biopsies that were done. My doctor called me and she was reading everything off and everything else sounded so good. <clears throat> and then I heard that news. I heard that word. Pre-cancer. Now I know it's just pre. <laughs> I'm grateful for that. So grateful. God got me in there because my menstrual came back normal in March and I would have never went in. And it's really hard to detect pre on a pap. So even the doctor was shocked that they detected that. It had been growing inside me. She said, oh, it would be years. Probably when you were obese. I do believe that the way I eat and everything probably saved it all. But I have to have a hysterectomy. Well, that told me right there. I will not be having a baby, <laughs> at least not myself. And I've come to terms with that. When you see this video this week, um, well, today is Tuesday the 22nd. It's actually me and my husband's 12 years of meeting today. He bought me this beautiful necklace from the Sawaski store. Show you. Isn't this pretty, you guys? Oh my gosh, I love it so much. He got this for me. We celebrate 12 years of being together. And I look at that as a very special day because if it wasn't for the day that we met, we wouldn't have this history, right? We would have never got married. None of that would ever happen. So, very special day today. And so it's Tuesday, the 22nd. I mean, on uh, Monday, the 22nd. 
one week from tomorrow, I will be having my surgery on the 30th. I'm asking for prayers. They're removing my uterus, my cervix, my fallopian tubes. They're keeping my ovaries. As long as there's nothing present in there, they are gonna check while they're in there. If there's no cancer present, because it will throw you into menopause. And they really don't want to throw people into menopause because that's hard on the heart. Menopause in itself is hard on the heart, you know, and um, bone loss for women and stuff. So if she can save them, she said odds are because it's pre, they can't really migrate. But we always do just check and we'll check. And then with this, we'll check just to make sure while we're in there, we'll put some infrared in there and check the ovaries. Um, to make sure if everything's all fine. Otherwise, if there is something there, we'll do some biopsies, keep as much as we can, but if not, we'll um, stitch, you know, stitch you up and you'll be done. All of this has been really tough for me to take. One, you guys all know that I'm really girly. I don't know if people hate that word. But I'm very girly. And I feel like with my organs being taken, I feel like almost like you're less of a woman. I won't menstruate anymore. This is the last one. In fact, today, I just got to tell you, this is the last one. I know every woman would say, oh, give that to me. Have you ever seen that movie, Erin Brockovich? You remember that part when she said, do you think when you don't have a uterus, your cervix and um, you know she mentioned a few things like that and, and breast are you still you know technically a woman and she said well yeah just she made a joke Julia Roberts made a joke and said just less um, just save money on tampons and no more underwire to try to make her laugh but it does affect some women you know I read about it uh, women sometimes even need counseling after something like this. This is really common, what I have. It's 1 in 11 women. 1 in 11. So, heck, my heart condition was 1 in a million. I got that. But I'm grateful I'm as far as I am in life. So, I think I mentioned, I would put it up on the screen, what, what I was diagnosed with. If not, I'll throw it up right here. But anyways, um, she said that this usually comes, it can be many things, nothing I did, you know, wrong. Could have been obesity, could have been family genetic, but only one other person, my mom's sister, had a hysterectomy at 25. And um, yeah, that was hard. She had a daughter, and she said that she almost, um, she was kind of young. She almost gave that one up for, she almost aborted that baby. Almost had an abortion. She was very young, and she's very glad she didn't, because a few years later, she found out she had to have everything removed and would never have had any kids. You know, people look at things differently today. It's so sad how many people do that and then make a mistake, you know. But I'm grateful that I have my son, and I still think that I'm going to have that heavenly faith. I still believe I'm going to have that little girl. I just believe it's going to be different now. I believe it's going to be through, a, you know, an adoption. That's how, what I believe now. Now I've come to terms that I know it's not going to be coming from me. And I was getting ready to set up to have my tubes untied. After I found out about the heart. I told God if it was 50%, then I know that you're saying to get it undone. It wasn't yet. I hadn't heard about it in the other news yet at that time. So, yeah, that's that. I um, found that out, and so that's what I'm dealing with. So when you guys see this video, 
We don't know the following week by Tuesday the surgery will be done. I'm going to do the best I can to have some videos up for you guys before. Um, the surgery people aren't laid up for a long time. It is robotic and it is liposopic. So most people go home the same day. She said most likely you will too, even though you have a heart condition. Your heart is pretty strong. So you'll most likely go home that day. About three hours after you wake up. If we feel everything's okay, we'll send you home. But I do got to be careful. I can't lift nothing over a gallon of milk for two weeks. I can shower. I cannot emerge like a bath. I can shower and all that, but for the first two weeks, that's all I can do is that. I can move around and do things. I just need to be careful that I don't, you know, lift things heavy and do stuff like that. So I won't be making a ton of videos. So that's why I'm trying to get a lot of videos now for you guys. I was just going to do it too, so you guys didn't know what was going on. And I thought, why do I have to hide those so I can tell people? Maybe somebody out there will come to me and tell me they have the same thing and maybe give me some encouragement and help me. But yeah, it was a shocker. I'm just glad it wasn't the big C word. My sister-in-law, and that's just through marriage. She had a full hysterectomy too. Um, she was a stage four cancer. And she's still here today and still doing good. And that was about 20 years ago. And my other sister-in-law, Again, only through marriage. Um, had a full hysterectomy, too. But these people aren't related to me. They're just through marriage. And unfortunately, I don't talk to either one of them right now. Because my brothers aren't with them anymore. So I can't get any advice from them either. But I'm going to take this head on. I'm going to be bold. I'm going to be brave. I'm going to be bold like a lion. If God brought me to this, he's going to get me through it. And I believe he has so much more for me. So I know I'm going to get through it. Anytime surgery, when you're put under anesthesia, there's always risk. So I'm just asking for prayers that everything goes well. And I get through this. But I'm not going to lie. I um, was very scared at first. I found this out like a month ago. I was very scared at first and then it kind of just went away because you forget about it because it's so far away before you had the surgery and now it's getting close and it's getting a little bit more scary again. And this surgery is performed multiple times one out of 11 women so it's been performed multiple times but I'm still a human and I'm still nervous and scared so asking for prayers and just really sad that I have to lose my lady parts but anyways I don't want to get too emotional because I have been and I know that day when it comes it's gonna be tough for me just like the day I had to get my tubes tied I feel like I'm redoing that all over again I do I feel like I'm redoing that all over again but God is good God is good he is and he stopped me from potential harm because I would have got probably got my tubes untied that's what I was looking into and it could have killed me so God had to stop it in some form But I do still believe my faith will never be gone. I still believe I'm going to have that little girl. But now she's going to be adoption. That's why I've had a little bit of fun on my channel with my adopted um, uh, ethnic babies that I've been getting. Um, and I'm going to be doing more. I really love them. They've really been bringing more joy to me now. I'm leaning on them more. I know that they are just dolls. But they are therapy dolls. That's why my doctor had me bring it in. They are definitely for therapy for people because they're so realistic. And fun to just coddle and hold. They really are. They've been bringing me a lot of joy. So 
But anyways, I'm kind of full, so I'm going to skip that that bar or whatever. But I um, thank you guys for listening. Um, anybody out there that's had this procedure, if you wouldn't mind giving me a little insight on it, I'd appreciate it. Or know anybody who did, I would appreciate that. So, but other than that, many prayers for me uh, that I get through it good and get home. And it'll be a thing in the past before I know it. And... I'll think, wow, you know, who cares if I don't have my period anymore? And, <clears throat> you know, nobody knows that it's gone because it's not like it's visible to see that. So I know I'll get through this. I'm a strong woman. I've proved it here doing keto. And that's why I want to remain with one meal for this week. I want to be at my most optimal health when I be, you know, get put under. So many prayers for me would be greatly appreciated. I really appreciate it, you guys. You guys have been wonderful to me. And I'm trying to keep these videos going, but if there are some far and few between videos, I'm sorry. I've just got so much going on with this business. I'm trying to get this last baby painted so I could get that up just to have a little bit of time in between that I take off, you know, for that surgery and stuff. So I hope you guys can understand that. And it's just this channel, like when you're trying to do a channel for a business, it's not easy. It's tough, tough. I've been running around here like a chicken with its head cut off. So, but yeah, I just appreciate you guys very much. I love all you guys very much. I do. And I thank you guys for being there for me. So yeah, man, you know, prayers, prayers, prayers. I really appreciate it. And uh, especially for peace, for peace, to get through the surgery and for peace prior to surgery and up to surgery and um, just after for that peace. But I know one day I'm still going to have that little girl. I know I will. I was torn though when I found that out. So Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's getting up there a little over 30 minutes. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And um, hope all of you guys are doing well, staying safe, happy, and healthy. I will continue to pray for each and every one of you. I always do. And remember not to have any idols above God. No idols above God. Let him be number one. And believe me, when you're going through stuff like this, I couldn't do it without God. I don't know how people do. I couldn't do it without God. Do I still get sad? Of course, I'm human. But much easier with God, walking with God. So make God your number one idol. All right. All right. You guys take care. I love you guys very much. And then I'll say it the correct way. Everybody take care. God bless. And I'll see each and every one of you in my very next upload. And always remember everybody what? Always remember to make God your number one idol. See you guys later.